The printing and publishing industries have been really important in Oxford, going right back to the 1500s. And after the university colleges, printing and publishing were the biggest employers in Oxford by far. This building was built on Walton Street in Jericho in the 1820s, when the Oxford University Press, OUP, moved out of the city centre. After the press was established here, hundreds of houses were built around it, very rapidly, many of which were lived in by people who worked there. OUP was phenomenally successful and generated immense income for the university. And by 1910, OUP was the largest single employer in Oxford. The hours were long and most people were on peace rates, paid by the hour according to how much work there was. The job at OUP was highly desirable. Seven-year apprenticeships were sought after, but they were only offered to sons of existing employees. And so sons followed fathers and grandfathers into OUP, with generations of whole families working there. I think we're going on a stride at the pub. Printers were often the most organised of workers and were known for their strong trades unions. The Printers' Union, the Typographical Association, was by far the biggest union in Oxford, with 400 members. The Oxford Trades Council, the first organisation to directly represent the interests of working men in Oxford, was founded by printers who were members of the Typographical Association. Printing workers in London started demanding shorter hours in 1866. In 1872, their cause was strengthened by the Nine Hours Movement, which had started in Canada and which campaigned to cut working hours to nine hours per day for everyone. In Oxford, a meeting of the Compositors Society decided to ask for a 54-hour week. The 54-hour week wasn't introduced for all OUP employees. But by the 1880s, the working day was greatly reduced for some. In November 1925, 295 out of 320 OUP workers went on strike in support of two colleagues who had been sacked for refusing to load goods onto a truck bound for a publishing house in London where there was already a strike. In Oxford, the union produced a strike bulletin to combat biased reporting in the local papers and pamphlets issued by OUP. Food vouchers were issued to strikers by the Oxford Trades Council, exchangeable at local co-op stores. On the 8th of June 1970, compositors and readers at OUP went on strike over how one of their members had been treated when he wanted to leave to do a course at nearby Ruskin College. This was a time when Ruskin history students, led by Labour historian Ralph Samuel, mixed with socialist historians, trade unionists, community activists and feminists. As part of the history workshop, a trailblazing project which links socialist history and the contemporary working class movement. The closure of the printing operations was devastating news to many local employees, some of whom could trace a history of working at the press over several generations. After the meeting, it was a crazy was announced. There was hardly anything said. People just walked away in disbelief. In 1989, an administrator at Robert Maxwell's Bergamon Press was sacked for no apparent reason. Feeling that an injury to one was an injury to all, 23 fellow workers staged a strike calling for her reinstatement. That strike ended up lasting three years, gaining widespread support from other countries. We either went on strike or we didn't, so that was our choice. Maxwell lives by threats and bullies, so you either take him on or you don't. And we decided unanimously, absolutely unanimously, that we would go out on strike. We were sacked on the first day. The company officials came to the picket line with dismissed letters in their hands. We knew that once you got there, it's going to be a long fight, there will be no return. We did strike bulletins once a week for the workforce. You know, there were very few of them who wouldn't take leaflets. We had people who spoke several languages, so they could go to Germany, they could go to France, and that is where the contact was made, and this all to put pressure on Maxwell. Most people, the vast majority, stayed with the strike, and of course they saw their life transformed. 
The strike, I think, in some way, made people stronger as, as persons.